does it come that I keep stumbling across new techniques to make lace? I mean, algorithms, possibly? But anyways, what better project than a petticoat to try it? Because if I mess it up, I just wear another skirt over it and no one will see. But first I need to make the petticoat itself. Luckily I have had the fabric lying around for a while. And after I had washed it, dried it and ironed it for what felt like hours, I could spread out the pattern pieces on it. Based on a butterick pattern from 1908, I had digitally enlarged the pattern and plotted it. In a process I probably made a mistake and the pattern was somehow too small and above all too short. That's why I had to adjust the length and the width and also recalculate the length of the ruffles. Once I was pretty sure everything was calculated correctly, I cut the pieces with the extra wide seam allowance and cut some more pieces for the pocket and the godet for the back closure. With all the pieces cut and the sun setting, it was time for a little treat. A hot lemon. With this sour refresher I then set about pinning the seams together so that I didn't accidentally sew the wrong pieces together. Freshly rested the next morning I then went on to prepare the sewing machine. I love this little bobbin winder, I just have full control over the proceedings as I control everything with my own hands and feet. So the skirt was princess seams, so I don't have any raw seam allowances. At first I had difficulties to estimate the seam allowance correctly, because I wanted to have a seam allowance of 5mm and then after ironing it over one of 1cm. But this was very difficult to estimate while sewing and I was just too lazy to mark it with tailor's chalk or even baste it. My solution was to just stick some post-its at the two proper distances from the needle. This helped a lot, but was kind of messy. Nevertheless, this is how I finished most of the seams and the pocket. Yes, also my petticoat has a pocket, even so it is probably pointless and cost me more than one desperate thought. I sewed it in wrong several times because of the princess seam. I had suddenly unsewn seams at the opening, somehow though I managed to get it right, I hope, I just hid the raw seam behind the pocket.
almost the same was the case for the slit at the back of the skirt. Somehow everything didn't fit together with the princess seam. I think I will finish such seams by hand in future. For the back gathering at the waistband I did the necessary stitches by hand without further ado and then stroked it out properly. And for the next seams I finally had a new old toy at my disposal, a spacing tool. With its help one can determine the width of the seam allowance. Apparently people understood early on that this is a practical function. Fortunately, I had seen a similar device on another old machine and suspected that this might be the function. Thanks to eBay, I found a suitable for one. This way I can easily keep the seam allowance of 5mm for the first seam and then of 1cm for the second seam. Then I used a rolled hem foot, which was also in my little box I bought, to finish all the hems, even if there are ruffles attached to them. I also sewed the ruffles together first and then finished down with the rolled hands. The ruffles have become infinitely long. I sewed along one edge of the ruffles with very large stitches using a thread that I can easily see, but it's not too noticeable if it's not pulled out later. With this I can then do the gathering relatively quickly. I made sure not to sew longer than one meter at a time so that I wouldn't be so bad if the thread broke and I also cut the ends as long as possible. That way I don't accidentally pull them out on one side. Then it was time for the gathering itself and it felt like there was no end. In order to check the ruffles on the skirt I had to be able to put it on my mannequin. I didn't have any ribbons to tie it up, so I crocheted some and then sewed them into the waistband. Before that, I had to file the waistband down, which I did by hand.
and then I could finally get to spreading the ruffles around this girl's hem. Rights. and I broke needlework and cutting out. The rule for the proportion of the band to a material gathered is that the band should be half the length of the material. And how long is your hem in proportion to the ruffles? The ruffles are four times as long, so the hem is just a quarter of the ruffles length. I think you should try it, don't you? So I took a considerable piece out of the ruffles and prepared the now newly assembled part. Even the rather rigorous shortening didn't really seem to have been enough because I couldn't smooth it out properly nor sew it on with the machine without the seam allowance popping up again and again on the front. So I spent a few hours sewing the dust ruffle on by hand because somehow I just couldn't bring myself to cut off more. One of my least favorite tasks is finishing the seams, but I did it. After fighting my way through ruffle heaven, more ruffles awaited. Because what is a petticoat without too many ruffles? I gathered the flounce by machine just like the dust ruffle and then tried to attach it at an even height. Folding rule was my tool of choice. But somehow I didn't manage to get the ruffles to an even height like this or on the floor. So I took everything off again and made marks with my folding rule and tailor chalk. I then pinned the ruffle along these marks, always making sure that the seam allowance was facing downwards and therefore later under the flounce. It was sewn in place in no time with the machine. Apparently I didn't miscalculate the length of the ruffles either. Of course this was not enough ruffles and I added the last one above the flounce. This one is only a few centimeters away from the previous seam so that it will later extend nicely over the flounce and the seam underneath will be hidden. This time I smoothed out the ruffles with a knitting needle while I was sewing, which also prevented parts of the seam allowance from being pushed forward under the seam. The hem is too short, it should be longer, and the ruffles, they are way too many. You know that, right? I definitely haven't done it perfect, but I've learned a lot and I will use that knowledge for the next projects, a skirt for example. But now I want to focus on the lace and, well, in a future video, we will hopefully see how I learn to make a mini lace. Bye!